Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to go over the LMC Foxconn conglomerate here. I'm calling it the conglomerate. And again, Foxconn and Lordstown are connected at the hip with this joint venture and joint production agreement and joint dis uh, distribution agreement. Uh, I think we all know what that is. If not, take a look at my prior videos. Let me just get started on this. Now, companies in the growing uh, Foxconn uh, Lordstown Motors BEV syndicate. The uh, first company is Fisker, and that's presently at 841. The pair, start of commercial production, is scheduled for 2024. This is the affordable BEV compact crossover. Okay, this will be manufactured at Lordstown, Ohio, under contract by Foxconn. Okay, that is an absolute certainty. Now, rumor is that it will be based on the MIH platform, which would mean Lordstown Motors will be involved through the joint venture and should earn fees and possible royalties on each sole, unit sold. So you have that. Uh, and I think it most likely is based on the MIH platform. Henry Fisker is a designer, and Lordstown is going to take his design prototype and turn it into a manufacturable vehicle, and then get it certified and homologated, and Foxconn's going to build it. So, we've got Fisker with the pair. And again, an LMC design and engineering will likely be involved, even if it's not an MIH platform vehicle, because if it's going into Lordstown factory, they're going to have to tweak the design uh, based on the capabilities of Lordstown, which is... Lordstown Motors plant, uh, first and foremost. Ocean. Now, this is the second bit. Ocean is a mid-sized uh, BEV crossover, so $10,000 more expensive. Magna uh, was uh, to be the contract manufacturer. It's called the FM29 platform uh, by Magna. They have a binding contract to make this car. Um, but the Inflation Reduction Act may change things? I don't know. Magna is technically a Canadian company, but they have manufacturing all over the world. I uh, Perhaps you guys can tell me. I'm not sure if they were planning on making the ocean in China, uh, which would keep costs down, and then shipping it out for distribution. If that were the case, it's not going to be uh, available for any of the uh, incentives under the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So, uh, and I heard uh, Henry Fisker in an interview actually talking about, thinking about, you know, where they were going to make this vehicle because of the uh, legislation that was passed. Now, uh, you know, would they move it? If they were going to move it somewhere, where would they move it? Of course, they'd move it to Lordstown because they already got one vehicle being built there, the pair. Uh, but... Uh, again, Magna, Canadian company, they manufacture vehicles all over the world. You can take a look at their website. Um, I seem to recall China was going to be one of the manufacturing zones for this vehicle, and they also have a production in, in Canada. Uh, but uh, if that were to change, I mean, so far, Lordstown and Foxconn do have the pair. And they might get the ocean to this is speculation on my part. Now let's talk about the next company that's in the Foxconn Lordstown web here. This is Stellantis. Now I believe the price is thirteen oh nine. There's a bunch of different Stellantis subdivisions and so forth. Anyway, initially the CEO was anti uh, BEV. He said there was no way to make a profit on <laughs> BEVs. Now he's changed course and stated he's all in on BEVs. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I believe, uh, there's a 50-50 joint venture with Foxconn to develop chips and subsystems for ICE and BEV platforms. And that's set to go to uh, commercial production in, in 2024. And this includes things like chips, maybe analog braking system chips, 
uh, circuit board sub assemblies and motor assemblies to run windshield wipers, these types of things. Also includes cloud, uh, self driving, and infotainment as related to autos. And generally speaking, the you know the auto environment, the interior environment. Now, Stellantis has a lot of different brands. They 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 make a lot of different cars. I'm just going to focus in on a couple of them here. Now, the Dodge and Jeep brands are two Stellantis' brands uh, that came under Stellantis uh, in the takeover or the, the purchase buyout, whatever, last year. Now, they just previewed the battery electric vehicle, uh, the Charger, the new Charger, which is a very attractive looking car. Um, the Challenger is likely to be, I do believe they have stated that all of their muscle cars are going to become battery electric vehicles, okay? Uh, their entire muscle car line, and these are very popular cars um, in, in the ICE version, so I'm sure they're going to do well electrically. Now, the other thing, of course, that Dodge has is the Ram pickup, all right? That's also going to be BEV. And that is coming, I believe, in, in 2024. Uh, also, the Jeep models are basically trucks, but they do have the Gladiator pickup. Now, again, Stellantis is in a 50-50 joint venture with Foxconn to develop components. We have the Re Inflation Reduction Act. Um, I'm sure that uh, Dodge and Jeep have ICE plants building these. Would it be more efficient to have these vehicles contract manufactured by Foxconn at the Lordstown plant? Yes. Uh, would uh, uh, Lordstown Motors do the engineering? Yes. Now, on these pickup trucks, could they use a copy of the uh, uh, platform they already have? Yes, or could they adapt, uh, adapt hub motors? Yes. So, again, since Stellantis is already in a 50-50, uh, you know, they're kind of having an affair with Foxconn. Foxconn's cheating on Lordstown there. But these are their vehicles. And, you know, they want to qualify under the Inflation Reduction Act. We know what has to happen. Uh, now, the rumor. And I mentioned this in my previous video, is that Stellantis is working with Foxconn on a battery electric vehicle for Europe. There's no proof of this. And again, here I mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, BVs must be assembled in North America, Canada, USA, and Mexico. So Lord San Ohio is a possible source for contract manufacturing. Uh, and you really can't mention Foxconn contract manufacturing in Lordstown, Ohio especially, but perhaps throughout the world, without LMC engineering and design. So I think, you know, this this is an association that's, I would say, is going to bear fruit at some point in time uh, for Lordstown Motors, okay? Would Dodge, for example, and this is pure speculation, I have no information on this, would Dodge, for example, want to offer a medium-priced electric battery electric pickup pickup truck? And would that medium-priced battery electric pickup truck be a rebranded Lordstown Endurance? Huh. I don't know. Sounds pretty likely to me. Could happen. Don't know. Don't don't make any investments based on that. Do your own DD. But anyway, another, uh, so you've got uh, Fisker, very exciting. We've got the pair. I don't know. They may, may move that ocean over. Um, Stellantis, again, already in a 50-50 joint venture with Foxconn, moving into BEBs. They've got all these light vehicles. You know, would uh, a white label truck be a potential would Lordstown Engineering, will Stellantis, because the, the, the CEO said that it's not profitable, would they want to outsource their manufacturing? Makes perfect sense. 
to a contract manufacturer like Foxconn, who's going to make all the component parts anyway. Uh, all right, so moving forward. Now we have Workhorse. Now this is very interesting. Um, this is a Cincinnati-based company. It's a public company. Um, Steve Burns was the CEO of Workhorse, and he left Workhorse to start Lordstown Motors. And uh, Steve Burns was the driving force behind Work Workhorse, and this was kind of a shade tree uh backyard inventor company steve burns was out in the wilderness working on bevs before anybody let me just go through that a little bit here uh the lmc endorsed be pickup which is in production now was first designed at workhorse at first it was it was a hybrid uh like a like a like a prius so it had a battery a short range battery and a internal combustion engine uh then it was kind of like the uh, bmw what is it the i3 where it had a battery on board and then it had a small internal combustion engine that ran a generator that would charge that battery uh and then finally it became a, a full battery electric vehicle uh being and, and Steve Burns has been working on electric pickup trucks longer than anybody in the business. You know, everybody's talking about Rivian. I want to tell you something about Rivian. Everything Rivian did failed. And all they tried to do was build cars, you know. And their truck is having a hard time. It's overly complex. The, you know, the glass roof is failing. The, the rolling tonnier cover is failing. I understand the uh, suspension system adjusts all the time at stop signs and so forth. Uh, but Steve Burns was way ahead of the curve of six scaring scaringe on, um, really developing real pickup trucks. You know, this is in Cincinnati where real people live, where real people need real pickup trucks, not a gear tunnel. Anyway, so Steve Burns, uh, developed that and then. He got involved with Olaf and, and Hub Motors, and he was one of the very first uh, to do this, if not the first, right after uh, Olaf uh, got certification in the European markets. And you can look at my video, Lordstown videos, on the uh, Hub Motor, on the Olaf Hub Motor, and you can go through the entire history of how this happened. It's very interesting, and you can see how those Hub Motors work and why Burns chose them. Uh, he, he got the license, uh, for this, for, um, North America. And then he moved the program over to Lordstown Motors. Okay. So it left workhorse and graduated to Lordstown Motors. Now, part of this deal, this, so Lordstown, uh, took Burns or Burns left Lord, uh, workhorse for Lordstown and they had to buy them out because of this technology. This was some of their main technology, they basically had two product lines, which was the pickup truck and the two different levels of box van delivery vans. Um, part of this deal was a 10% stock interest in Lordstown Motors, which uh, Workhorse received as part of the deal. Uh, they got a new CEO at Workhorse. Don't know much about them. I have covered Workhorse in the past. I have videos on them. I had diverted my attention uh, pretty much full-time to Lordstown Motors, seeing the opportunity there and wanted to get the information out. Um, the new CEO, who is a military guy, sold off this interest at a really bad time uh, that hurt uh, rides, the ride stock price and uh, the um, press was bad and... Uh, You'll see later why I think this is this is a question about the CEO's skill set. Now, right around this time, General Motors also sold. And I would add, this new CEO at Workhorse, and again, I'm not going to criticize, but they had trucks out in, in customers' hands putting miles on them. And, um, you know, he decided to recall everything and, uh, you know, do a redesign. I don't know what he's doing. I have to take a close look at the company. 
Um, again, I'm going to question his skill set based on this stock sale. But let's move on to the rest about Workhorse. Workhorse also made a run at the BV Postal Vehicle Contract. Okay, now this was supposed to be a shoe in because, again, uh, Workhorse was ahead of everybody on the curb. Ford, everybody on these electric vehicles, these electric delivery vehicles. Um, they had a van slash box truck, also developed initially by Burns. And, you know, they had the endurance platform. Uh, the plan was to get this contract and to assemble these post office battery electric vehicles at Lordstown Motors by Burns. So it would be just a carry-on of the workhorse uh, efforts by Burns at Lordstown. Um, so, hey, they were going to get the contract. Uh, they were going to build the trucks at Lordstown. Uh, the contract went to another firm. And this is a very, I got PA, postal, it's postal uh, office, post office. This is a very sketch. I mean, I have uh several videos going over this deal i do believe initially uh workhorse was hamstrung intentionally as they were favoring uh ford they actually stalled the approval of the vehicle to give ford a chance to get a battery electric vehicle out and, and ford never even had one to do the they did the evaluation on a gas fired vehicle uh the evaluation drive of the workhorse um, vehicle was borderline fraud, in my opinion. You, uh, I'll just allege that. I don't know, but you've got to read. Watch my videos on this if you want the inside story on this. You talk about scuttling a, a brand and scuttling a product and, and just uh, something where workhorse had you know, a right to win that contract, which would have made so much sense for the country and would have been so much better for the country and for the environment, and for the budget of the post office and for everything. And they gave it to, I believe, Oshkosh, who never made an electric vehicle in their life, and they built tanks. You know, could it be any worse? You know, and, and like I said, I believe they held it for Ford, and then when Ford couldn't get it done, they gave it to Oshkosh. But anyway, they, they there was just a outright war against uh, Workhorse getting this. And by the way, uh, the Postmaster, I had a video planned on him. I mentioned this before. I did a lot of research on him. I didn't put it out because I was afraid of legal action. You gotta you gotta look into this guy's background. Maybe I mean I'm not. I'm just I shouldn't say that. Just allege that. You take a look at it and decide for yourself. Uh, but anyway, uh, Biden is trying to get the leadership out at the Postal Service. If they do, um, they may open up this contract again. As it is, these are going to all be ICE. The new postal vehicles are going to be ICE vehicles. They're going to convert a certain percentage of them to battery electric. It's not very good for the country or the budget. Uh so maybe uh, this administration, the Biden administration, can do something about that. Now, uh, so as part of the deal to split the endurance better electric pickup truck off from Workhorse and create uh, LMC with Burns, Workhorse uh, in 2020 was paid $12.2 million by Lordstown Motors for rights to the endurance uh, uh, BEV to become a Lordstown Motors product. So that moved the entire product and program over to Lordstown Motors. That was 12 mil. Uh, also, Workhorse, and this you can see how Workhorse is joined at the hip with Lordstown Motors. Why the CEO would want to sell the stock and damage uh, you know, the financial position and so forth of Lordstown Motors Unless they were on the verge of bankruptcy, I do not know. Uh, but look at this. Workhorse will receive a license fee equal to 1% of the gross sale uh, price for each Lordstown Motors truck up to the first 200,000 units. Okay, and that's from the Youngstown Business Journal. You can look that up and read it for yourself. Now, this is kind of a complex deal. Uh, 
a lot of these royalties have been paid up front. As you can see, 200,000 units. Everybody was saying Steve Burns doesn't know what he's talking about. He's lying about the sales. Let me tell you. I have a, a video about the pre-orders that were in at, at uh, you got to understand, there was no F-150, there was no Rivian, there was no nothing. The, the Endurance was the only battery electric vehicle pickup truck. Anyway, you can see what they put this amount of. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, now, a portion of this has been prepaid. Uh, LMC will pay the 1% license fee for the remainder of the two $200,000 units. Uh, to workhorse this should be workhorse here so uh is this going to impact uh lordstown you're going to have to look up the details of this deal yourself but i can tell you that in my reading it appears as though the majority of these uh, royalties have been paid ahead of time and it's just a matter of uh, catching up with the remaining ones after production starts but look at that number okay look at that number 200,000. Why'd they pick 200,000? What do you think? You think maybe they had an idea that was going to be an accurate number? Or maybe that there was going to be more than 200,000 units? Anyway, let's move forward. Workhorse will also receive an additional 4% commission on the gross sale price of trucks sold to fulfill, now listen to this, 6,000 existing, existing pre-orders. So at the time this truck went over, they had 6,000 orders. Okay, okay, for the workhorse, and this is what it was called, the W15, uh, before it was the Endurance, that were transferred to Lordstown Motors. So, oh, Steve Burns is lying about orders. Well, here's another 6000 okay? And they're going to be paid a commission. So they're going to be paid a commission on these 6000 for uh 4% on these existing orders. That shouldn't hurt uh, Lordstown's bottom line because... They're pre-existing, uh, so forth. Uh, and again, we've got a 200,000 unit mark here. So uh, read between the lines, okay? Uh, Workhorse also reported it sold off. Now, this is present news. It's non-core assets and intellectual property to allow its full strategic focus on uh, production. This should be production of its last mile C-series delivery vehicles which this military guy recalled them all. I don't know. You know, they said they were underpowered, but that wasn't, a, I don't know where that complaint came from. I, I have to do more research on this, but I'm just saying. They're going to put their focus on their C-series delivery vehicles and their patented horsefly drone truck mounted technology. And this is dated 2020. Now, the horsefly drone truck mounted technology, again, this is Steve Burns totally. This is Steve Burns' invention. And this is where the drone is mounted on the roof of the box van, and the package is suspended below it. And there is a phone app where someone can remotely manage where the drone drops the package on their property and what the truck driver can do is stop and this can either automatically or they can load it and it'll take off and do a delivery and then they'll go and do another delivery and it'll catch up with them and land back on top of the truck and as steve uh, burns said uh we can we they had one mounted on the truck which is a demo video he goes we can mount eight of these things on a truck and have them run it okay um and what they're talking about full strategic focus one of the other things that steve burns is working on which everybody's working on now are these you know uh small aircraft personal and and small uh aircraft electric aircraft for commuting and uh, doing small flights and you see that all the major airlines are have, are investing in these uh, companies and uh, you can see all the prototypes out there and uh, you know the major airlines are using are, are going to use these things uh, to go from smaller airports to bigger airports and they're talking about air taxis and so forth steve burns back in the day while he was at 
at work, what they're talking about, full strategic focus, one of the things he was focusing on and developed using hub motors was a two-person flying electric vehicle with hub motors that would have autopilot on it that would uh, uh, take you to the destination and so forth. Now, the cool thing about this flying vehicle was it would kind of fit in a normal parking space. And when you flew it home, uh, you folded the arms down because the motors were mounted on arms. And it would fit in a normal garage. <laughs> okay. And they had this thing past the prototype stage where they were flying it and they were flying it tethered. Okay. And the next step was open air testing. Anyway. Now, let's just get back to the topic at hand. This, by the way, this uh, flying car, uh, auto, and it also runs on full auto mode, uh, full self-driving, full self-flying. Uh, this was sold to a defense contractor who is turning it into, or has perhaps secretly turned it into already, an autonomous uh, supply delivery vehicle for frontline troops, uh, and it doesn't require a pilot. And they bought the idea, and they bought everything, and that's what it's going to be used for. But again, Steve Burns ahead of the turf. Now, I just want to talk about this drone delivery uh, system. Uh, you know, Amazon spent twelve. I think $12 billion trying to come up with a strategy for drone delivery. They, they canceled their home for whole product because it's so stupid what Amazon was doing. They were going to like build a giant beehive, uh, you know, like every uh, 50 blocks in a, in a city. And then they were going to have thousands of drones in these beehives. And then they were all going to fly out and go and deliver and fly back. Can you imagine the noise? Can you imagine how horrible that would be. This again is truck mounted. It takes the drones to where they're, where they're going to be launched. They have short flights. Uh, you can use it, not use it, flexibility. Anyway, of all, and I've looked into drone delivery systems, and this is something I've done a video on. And let me tell you, this is, in my opinion, the absolute best drone solution. And it is the only viable drone delivery system for a company like Amazon or the U.S. Postal Office um, that's going to work. And they've been working on it straight along. And they're actually, the last time I looked, they were using it in a test case, delivering medical supplies in the southern United States. Now, uh, Israel's working on a air traffic control system for these types of drones, uh, automated air traffic control system. And, uh, you know, they have to, this technology has to be licensed by the government. But this is extremely valuable if the CEO can execute it and get it to production. Now, they said they, they want to focus on horse fly drone truck mounted delivery. This, this is a reason... Um, you know, to look at workhorse stock. And I would imagine, but I'm not certain, I would think this is right up Foxconn and Lordstown Motors. It's right in their bailiwick. It's in their wheelhouse. This was built, I think this, again, would be contract manufactured at Lordstown. That's speculation on my trucks. Uh, these trucks, and now this was the intention initially. These trucks, the C and the S, I forget what the uh, the, uh, the nomenclature is on these big delivery vans, uh, were initially planned to be manufactured at Lordstown Motors. That was the whole plan. Uh, start Lordstown Motors, get the postal contract, build the endurance, and build the um, postal vehicles at the Lordstown plant using hub motors. It was sabotaged by the dark forces of the American business community, which exist. Um, could it still happen in the LMC Foxconn world? You know, this would really be a big deal. Okay. Uh, 
But the CEO at Workforce, is he up to it? Now, an interesting thing having to do with all this is that the Biden administration is looking into opening up the postal BV contract again, possibly. And they want to get the postmaster out too, but that's a difficult thing to do. Um, but um, so there's that. But there's, again, this is speculation on my part. I get accused of being a, a speculator uh, with Lordstown Motors. But these are all facts that I'm stating. And I'm just using deduction to come to, to a conclusion here. Now we have Geely. Uh, Geely Auto Group is a leading automobile manufacturer based in Hangzhou, China, founded in 97, of a holding group. Several leading brands included Geely Auto, Link, Proton Cards, and Geometry. Now they build a lot of different things, but these are their car brands, all right? Geely, Volvo, Zeker, Lotus, Holstar. And then they got Linko, Geometry, Zeker, uh, but, you know, just look at it. You got Polestar, you got Lotus, Lotus, Volvo, okay? Think this is, you think this is a main, big time? <laughs> of course it is. I think everybody's hold of this company, heard of this company. I don't know if, um, no, BYD would be uh, Buffett's company. In 2021, Foxconn, uh, entered into a joint venture, which was a precursor of the MIH concept uh, with Geely. So this is something they were thinking about then. It has progressed to the MIH contract. I think this probably is still into effect. In 2022, a subsidiary, now this is this year, subsidiary in Geely and a subsidiary of Foxconn, okay, have formed and funded a JV to produce chips uh, for the auto industry. So this is all on the down low. It's kind of hidden in subsidiaries, and there isn't a lot of information on it anywhere. Very little else is known at the moment. But, again, these guys, Foxconn is cheating on Lordstown Motors again with Geely. And you look at all these Geely vehicles, Polestar, I believe, right now is built in China. Not sure where Lotus is made. I think, I don't think it's England anymore. But if they want to make these brand, if they, and Volvo, uh, of course. Now, if they want these electric vehicles of these brands and these other brands as well to get into the U.S. market and to get the um, tax credits and so forth, you're going to have to make them in North America. That would be Canada. U.S. and Mexico, they're already in bed with Foxconn, Lordstown Motors. I mean, even if Foxconn decides to build assembly plants in Mexico and Canada, that could be five years away, let's say. Even at that point, it, I think there's still a very good chance that Lordstown Motors is going to be involved in the design of obligation, certification of these vehicles, generating fees, generating, you know, percentages on each unit no, uh, sold, and so forth. And I think we could say that with uh, a bit of certainty. But again, this is just, just another, I mean, this is a giant web of companies that are related to Foxconn and now uh, Lordstown Motors is joined at the hip with Foxconn, so they're related. They're related to these companies as well. And you know, both uh, Dan Niavaji and uh, Hightower said, "Reason we came to Lordstown, work with Foxconn." So this is why. Now, I believe this is the final company is Fairday Future. You can see this price. Uh, China's Geely Holding said on Friday, it and Foxconn are in talks to buy, provide contract manufacturing services to Faraday Future. Uh, Geely had said that in a statement, it signed a framework agreement to offer technology and uh, engineering support to Faraday Future and then become a minor investor in Faraday Future's listing. So, uh, there you go. Now, they said Geely signed the contract. Foxconn was involved in the talks. 
we don't know where that is now. Again, there's not a lot of news on this. This is a January 2021 article, so it's kind of an old article. But you can see again um, the association with this vehicle. And I think, uh, you know, I have done a number of vis uh, videos on Faraday Future. Let's just go through the rest of this uh, presentation. I'm not going I'm going to talk about it anyway. So I have covered, I have a video coming. I did a ton of research and I was getting ready to do the video and uh, I got sidetracked by Nordstein Motors issues. So anyway, now I have talked to staff at Faraday Future. Now they plan to make a halo car. That's their big 91. In the USA, in Fremont, California, and people are saying, oh, well, there's only 200. Or well, you know, this is a halo car. This is the first year of production. This is Rolls Royce level of luxury. It puts the Rolls Royce SUV to shame. This is a fantastic car. Take a look at it. Take a look at the videos. Take a look at my videos on it about the interior environment in this vehicle and the technology, wow. Now, so they were going to build the Halo car in the United States in Fremont, California. Then there is a mid-range line that they have planned, uh, you know, based on this uh, Halo car, and they were going to build that in South Korea and for export, so forth. And then they have a third tier which is an affordable range, kind of like the Fisker line. Uh, and they were going to build that in China for domestic and export markets. Uh, now, this was their plan all along. So everybody's saying, well, they can only build, well, you know, they're, they're, they're just building the halo cars in Fremont. Okay, forget about it. Okay, they got much bigger plans than that. Uh, but this was before the inflation reduction act so if they want to sell a mainstream affordable car in the united states that's what the implication or a mid mid-level crossover or whatever you want to call it and they want to get the tax credits they're going to have to build that vehicle in north america and that's either china united states or uh, mexico and again geely's an investor in faraday future and a joint venture partner with Foxconn. Foxconn's already talked to him about contract manufacturing services. Could these lower lower end models end up being built in Lordstown, Ohio, and engineered for production, homologation, so forth, by Lordstown Motors for Foxconn, generating fees and uh, percentages on units sold? I don't think this is outside the realm of possibility. Now, I just want to go over some additional things on Faraday Future because uh, I, I have done a lot of work on this company. This is a breakthrough vehicle. I mean, the cockpit is something else. It's, I believe, the only... The battery is fully immersed in a non-flammable liquid. It doesn't have cooling channels. It doesn't have little tubelets. It's sitting in liquid which allows for massively fast charging and massively fast dispensing of energy out of the battery and it's safer and so forth so i believe this is the only uh, only vehicle electric vehicle right now that's doing this um yt is china's elon musk and he's a dynamic visionary you have to look up yt he invented Netflix before there was Netflix. He invented it in China. He made billions in, on the internet. He decided to go into uh, electric vehicles, and his top competitor was Elon Musk. Now, they had a dismal failure at the launch of uh, their uh, FF91 at a trade show. Uh, wasn't the vehicle's fault. It was the wireless communications were hampered by the structure of uh, that they were in and they could not get the car to operate functional function properly because of that and it looked bad there was actually nothing wrong with it but that hurt that hurt the brand but yt is very cool and he has got a 
high risk profile. He's very much Elon Musk. Um, you know, 10 years ago, at least, uh, everybody's trying to make, oh, they're talking about, oh, in-car entertainment and, oh, the screens and, oh, and we got to do this. Why, T, you look at, look at for 10 years ago, maybe more than 10 years ago. YT was doing all this. Not only was he doing it, he did it. He got it all in the car. He got it working. He got it. The car exists that everyone wants to make right now. Uh, you know, the Cadillac Lyric is trying to be what, uh, you know, uh, Foxconn and these guys, uh, Stellantis are planning for the interior environment, you know, and all the cloud. That's all YT did that 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. Um, I've spoken to the staff at, at Fair Day Future, uh, to a few of them. They are very loyal. They are loyal to YT. They are loyal to the brand. They are committed. They are very proud of the superior battery electric vehicle they have made. Uh, I met some of them. They were kind of in a chase car for a testing vehicle, and they were going to drive the vehicle, the test vehicle around. They never made it, but I didn't get my test ride in a prototype. But anyway, uh, most all of the staff from the beginning have stayed with this company through thick and thin. That's how much they believe in this product. And YT. Okay. Now, now YT, you know, after this uh, horrendous downturn and the shortened reports, uh, distort reports and everything else, uh, he went into debt. He went into uh a form of bankruptcy. He had to hide out. He couldn't go back to China because they were after him. They were going to put him in jail because he had, and so he hid out in the United States and kept working on this car. But uh, as of my last bit of research, which was a while ago, uh, he had mended his ties with the uh, CCP. He had uh, uh, paid back massive amounts of the money that he owed uh i think he was working to pay he he has pledged that he is going to repay every penny uh that he owes because people had invested with him and uh, you know the investment had gone on and so forth but he he has remediated his uh, reputation in china so he's in good stead in china and um and he's working to repay everyone and and you know prodigal son, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, uh, and he was exiled in California for a while. Uh, couldn't go back to China and so forth. But those are solved. Now, there's a new set of problems at uh, Verde Future. But let's just say the FF91 deliveries are supposed to start at the end of 2022. And again, they're saying, oh, there's only 200. It's, it's a halo car. This is the Rolls Royce. This is... Rolls Royce level. This is better than a Rolls Royce. You have to look at the car, compare it feature by feature with the Rolls Royce uh, SUV. Not even close. Uh, now, the top engineers, this has just come out. Some of the top engineers at, Fer uh, at Faraday Future are stating that one of the board members, and I'm not sure if it's the chairman or what, it's, it's a female board member. They state that she is working against Faraday Future's financial interests. She's trying to force a restructuring of the company. They want her out. So there's this drama. Okay. And as I said, these engineers have all stuck with this company from the start. And they are against this board member. And they have gone public on this. Okay. This is just breaking news. In October 21, short and distort attack by Jay Capel again. Now look what they're doing. Move over Lordstown, right? Faraday stands for embezzlement vehicle, okay? Blah, 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 will ever sell a car. Well, you know, you're wrong. So far, nothing but a bucket to collect money from U.S. investors and pour into the... Well, you know, I'm sorry. There's so much activity going on in China. And you got to understand, this is an NY, a NASDAQ-listed stock that has operations in China. Now, you have to t conduct 
you know, a corporate lawyer and so forth in international law. But the way I, I saw it in my first read of it anyway was investing in Faraday Future was a way of investing in the Chinese battery electric vehicle market uh, through NASDAQ, having the generally accepted accounting principles, having the transparency and reporting that you don't get with the uh, Chinese listed companies, uh, having access to the Chinese market, building the affordable level car uh, from Faraday Future in China. I think that this can be very powerful. Of course, we have some economic issues in China right now, uh, and some other things have changed. The Inflation Reduction Act, which may change these plans, but uh, this is, I think, one of the things. Besides having a great vehicle uh, that Faraday Future has to offer, you have to do your own DD on that, please. Okay, complicated topic. Um, now, this short and distort attack. Uh, this this attack, as usual, you know, SEC came in. It resulted in some reorganization. I believe the CEO got his salary cut. Uh, YT too, some others too. They redefined YT's role, you know. And this is a bunch of malarkey. Okay, this is a typical short attack. Was done as as was done the Lord's time letters. You see, they even mention it. Uh, I now find these attack reports to be a badge of honor for the BEV manufacturer's attack. It means somebody, and I have down here, OEMs, question mark? Uh, maybe dealers, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to look into that for yourself. Uh, but uh, anyone who has an interest in the conventional way of manufacturing and selling automobiles are going to be after these companies. Powers that be have decided that they were a threat and suddenly this support just appeared now fair day future was a threat was a threat to who well i don't know let's just speculate just spitballing here just you know gm cadillac lincoln continental i don't know i'm just guessing that's that i'm not making any accusations you can do your own dd on that um you know, with Lordstown Motors, let's see. You know, who would who would want the first ele battery electric pickup truck? Uh, who would want to stifle that? I don't know. Maybe, you know, I mean, theoretically, just spitballing, maybe Ford. Anyway, uh, now one laughable claim in this report, I recall, was that YT was taking too big of a role in the company behind the scenes. Versus his defined role. Now, as part of their restructuring, his debt restructuring, he had to step back some from some of his duties, and he was uh, uh, appointed environmental uh, electronic environmental designer or something like that uh, uh, for the vehicle. But anyway, duh. Okay, how stupid do you have to be to write this stuff? He's the founder. What do you mean he's taking too big of a role behind the scenes? Of course he's going to take a role behind the scenes. Of course. It, this is so stupid. I can't I can't believe I'm reading this. I hate these short and distorted things. These short and distorted attacks could be a flag for investors. Now this, you're going to have to don't. I'm not a financial advisor, engineer, accountant, or econom, economist. I don't. I'm just a guy on the Internet. And don't take my advice. Please do your own DD. Any investment can result in a catastrophic loss. Believe me. And that happens. And in this market, it can happen. Anyway, I'm just going to get back to it. These S&D attacks could be a flag uh, for investors looking for undervalued, high-risk investments with potentially powerful products. The point I'm making here is if it was a crap product that didn't present a threat to anybody, you know, nobody's going to put out a short and distort on it. Why would they? It's a waste of time and effort. So this is definitely high risk. And again, guys, this is, you know, this is total loss. We're looking at high potential of total losses. But I'm just stating this 
just by going over and reading my own comments here. But anyway, uh, but if you look at Tesla, Tesla was a victim of this, short and distort. Ride, and I believe Ride is going to to uh, have, I, I think Ride is, is uh, and what in its current configuration with Foxconn, uh, Foxconn is a hedge for Tesla, you own Tesla. Uh, so even, you know, ride was even mentioned in this, uh, in this report. Uh, so the potential, uh, potential returns can be massive on these types, of, but this is extremely high risk. So trust me, even with ride, even at this point with these markets and everything, you have to come to the realization that any, any money you invest in a company like Ride, and again, I'm not a, not a professional, I'm just giving you my opinion, you're at risk of losing it. And the same would be for this stock or any other stock in this book. But I just want to give a quote here that I heard from somebody. Uh, you make money when you buy a stock, not when you sell it. And what does that mean? The lower you buy that, the more money you're going to make on it. So that's kind of a flea market thing. You know, you can buy stuff for a penny and sell it for a dime. Anyway, the point is, um, it's just, a, you know, a, this is a thought exercise. Guys, you do your own DD and come up with your own strategy. And this, is, of course, is no time for high-risk investments. Uh, here's the rub with uh, with. Uh, Faraday future. I believe significant investments in plant equipment have been made or planned in China uh, to make the affordable Faraday future. Uh, will the Inflation Reduction Act cause this production to be moved to the USA? Huh. Would it make sense to build this vehicle at Lordstown via LMC Design and Engineering and Foxconn Contract Manufacturing? I'd say the probability of that is less than 50, 50%, but could it happen? So in other words, instead of shipping cars over from China, which is basically isn't going to be financially feasible under this new act, uh, they would have the domestic Chinese Fair Day Future uh, production in China for the you know $40,000, whatever the... the that price mark would be the lower cost version of this more affordable version of this car so they would have that in china for the chinese market and guess what instead of exporting those cars to the united states they could build those cars at lordstown uh engineered homologated and certified by lordstown motors and built under contract by Foxconn and distributed in the United States. Again, uh, I don't want to go through this litany of relationships here, but you can see how all these things are interlocking. Is this outside? Is this crazy talk? Is this outside the uh, realm of possibility? No. Uh, less than 50% now, but could it change? I mean, there's a possibility. I'm just looking here at what these relationships mean. Uh, take a look at my Fair Day Future videos, and I got to get this one out. I did. There is a guy in China who has done several videos. You have to translate them from Chinese. He has a lot of great insights uh, into Fair Day Future, NYT, and so forth. Anyway, moving forward, that's a wrap, guys. I just want to show you. This is a 2020 picture of the workhorse uh, battery electric top, high top van concept. And this was by Steve Burns. And as you can see here, I had showed you the spy photo of the high top van. And this is another version here. I'm not sure if hub motors were available to them when this was done but just to give you an idea and this is under the workhorse logo and um i'm not sure if this is a horsefly uh, drone encapsulation up here or not but just to give you an idea just cross that out and put lord motors on there okay anyway 
All right, this is MXUX. I hope you like the move uh, the uh, video. I'm not a financial advisor, engineer, accountant, or attorney. Do your own DD. Right is a high risk investment. There's a risk of catastrophic loss. The same goes for all the other companies I mentioned here. Good luck in the market. This is it.